One problem which many students face in learning mathematics is that it is found to be too abstract for them. This abstract nature of mathematics can be easily handled and uh, mathematics can be made enjoyable rather than a subject which generates phobia in many people by introducing several beautiful examples which are drawn from nature so that they can easily relate what they are learning to something in their own life. This seems to be the practice which the Indian mathematicians have adopted and uh, the kind of examples that we find are quite interesting and uh, drawn from varied sources. They choose example from the kind of stories which they listen like Ramayana, Mahabharata. So, they choose sometimes examples from uh, the kind of uh, nature that you will see in your day to day life. For instance, somebody plucking flowers, so you try to construct an example. So, this is a very common feature. Sometimes you will find examples wherein they say they have a group of honey bees go from here to there etcetera, which also people would have observed. So, let me just give you a flavor of the kind of examples that they construct. While explaining uh, the formula for quadratic equation, so which is the most fundamental thing that one learns. Bhaskara constructs uh, several examples. One interesting example which I found was a story from Mahabharata, which almost everyone knew. So, he basically uh, graphically portrays the kind of battle that took place between two great warriors Arjuna and Karna. The verse goes like this Parthah Karna Vadhaya Marganaganam Krudho Rane Sandhe Tasyahardhena Nivarya Tacharaganam Mulais Chatur Birhayan Shalyam Shadbi Athe Shubhistri Pirapi Chatram Dhajam Karmukam Chiche Dasya Shirashare Katite Yanarjuna Sandhe. So, this is a very beautiful verse which has been composed in Shardula Vikridita. So, Partha Karnavadhaya Marganaganam Parthaha refers to Arjuna. Karna Vadhaya in order to slay Karna, Marganaganam. Gana basically means group, Marganagana. He uses the word Margana to refer to arrows. So, we have various other terms, Bana, Shara, and so on, but he has specifically chosen to have this um, alliteration. Marganaganam. So, Margana is basically that which actually traces the direction. So, you shoot an arrow in order to hit a particular object and therefore, it has to go along the direction. So, Marganaganam, a group of arrows were shot by Arjuna. Kruddhaha Rane Sandhade, in the battle he shot. Then he graphically describes how many arrows were used for a specific purpose and how he finally finished. Suppose you have some x number of arrows which were shot. So, x by 2, tasya ardhena nivarya tacharaganam. So, if the other fellow shoots an arrow, you also try to shoot in the same direction so that they just meet each other and then fall. So, he says x by 2 arrows were essentially used only to meet, collide the other arrow and then both of them they fall down. Tacharaganam then Mulais Chaturbhihi Hayanu. Haya means horse. Mulais Chaturbhihi. So, now he brings in the square root. Hayanu. So, to finish the horse of the other person. See, in the Indian tradition, you have a certain uh, procedure which you have to follow. So, before you directly hit the other person. So, this was also a part of the training which people undergo as to how you have to do. So, today also we have that you cannot directly go and uh, hit a 
place where civilians live. So, here in fact, uh, there are interesting episodes which one finds wherein some of the British officers were really uh, puzzled at the kind of norms which have been created by us while you fight with each other. The war means war, you have to go and finish people. So, they, that is how they thought, but here people did not do that way. And that is somehow, I mean, captured by Bhaskara in this verse itself as he is trying to narrate the story. So, you by finishing the horses, what you do is you do not allow the other person to move towards you. So, this is one step. So, then next level is you try to chop the flag of his thing. So, you try to do various other things. So, at all these stages, this person can actually surrender to you and then say, I retreat. So, in which case you allow him to go back. It is not that you want to finish him, but you want to see to it that you win the battle and for dharma. Anyway, so that is something which you can see in this verse itself. He says, Shalyam Shadbhihi. Shalya is the charioter for uh, Karna. So, you finish him also. Okay. Atha Yishubhistribhihi. Then three were used for Chhatram, Dhvajam, Karmukam. Chhatra is umbrella, Dhvaja is flag. Karmukam, Karmukam means bow. So, the bow that Karna was using was also intervened by the arrow of Arjuna and that also broke. So, he is just left with weaponless. So, at this stage Karna, if he were to say that I accept the defeat, so then he would have been left free. But he did not. Therefore, Chichedasya Shiraha Sharena, one arrow was used for that. Now, the question is, Totally, how many arrows were used by Arjuna? So, now you find a square root here appearing, you find various other constants appearing, and x by 2, x factor is there, root x factor is there, and some constant factor is there. A root x happens to be 10 or minus 2, and uh, therefore, x is 100. So, you cannot have a negative arrow. So, this is a very interesting example which has been chosen from mythology.